Hello, I am Michael Collins and this is Media Focus. In this video, what we're going to be discussing is how to apply theory to the representation question on Les Revenants. Okay, so this is Les Revenants, aka the returned, the French language, extremely atypical zombie show, uh, which was first released on Canal Plus, I think in 2012, not 100% sure. Um, so when we're dealing with representation, what we need to consider is this. Nothing in a media product is real, okay? Everything that we see in a media product is a complete lie, okay? Everything we see in a media product is a reconstruction. So whether that be men or women or children or French people or gay people or straight people or black people or white people or France or England or the North or whatever, Everything that we see in a media product has been constructed by the producer for ideological purposes. OK, and if we want to make that, you know, a little bit more straightforward, essentially what the producer is attempting to do is to influence the audience and get them to agree with their ideological perspective. OK, but men, women, Welsh people, French people, whatever, are this group of people. So media products make a claim about reality. Every media product we see is essentially a lie, is essentially a fabrication, but it makes a total claim about reality. And Le Revenant, even though it has zombies, even though it is clearly fanciful in many different ways, is also making claims about realism. So there are three theorists that you could be asked to evaluate for Le Revenant. So one is Stuart Hall's representation theory. Another one would be Lisbeth Van Zunen's feminist theory, which often gets boiled down to the idea of the male gaze or the, essentially the idea that men and women are represented in different ways. Um, and the other theory would be Bell Hooks's feminist theory which is sometimes boiled down to intersectional feminism or this idea that feminism is for everyone, okay? And interestingly, these three theories all kind of join up into one when we apply them to Le Revenon. So a really interesting character to look at in Le Revenon is the character of Julie, right? So Julie is in many ways an a typical, non-stereotypical representation of a woman. Let's just go through the theorists really quickly with reference to Julie. And I think the scene that we can use is the scene where Julie comes home from work. So she's just gone to go and see Monsieur Costa um, and she comes back from work by herself. And oh my God, there's Victor stalking her on the bus. Very, very stereotypical, cliched horror film stuff going on there, okay? Now, first of all, Stuart Hall argues that representations are ideological, right? They always have a message behind them. But Stuart Hall also argues that stereotypes have a function in a media product. So that stereotypes function for example, as a shortcut to audiences. So if we, for example, say that, well, women are, um, how should we put this without sounding sexist? If we say a stereotypical representation of women is that they are weak and submissive and they are more nurturing and they rear children, then the stereotype that we might use about men is they're more assertive and they're more aggressive and uh, they are more suited to occupational kind of ideas in our society, okay? And for Stuart Hall, these ideas rep represent and reflect ideological perspectives. So when we see traditional straightforward stereotypes in a TV show, then we know that the producer is making traditional and straightforward ideological arguments. Le Revenant turns this on its head. We could argue that Julie or Julie is not a traditional, straightforward representation of a woman, that she challenges this stereotype, which means that we could argue 
that this entire show, not just Julie, but also we can look at Simon, Elena, all of these characters challenge traditional, straightforward stereotypes of gender. Okay, why? To make a comment on the representation of men and women. This is something that Letter Avenon is quite good at, is challenging stereotypical representations of men and women in order to make a comment about our society. It's a pretty big idea. Why is it doing this? Well, it helps it to appeal to a very, very specific niche audience. Ultimately, we can be quite cynical and we can say it's all about the money, right? Which leads us into Lisbeth Van Zunen's theory, right? Lisbeth Van Zunen argues that men and women are represented differently. So if we go back to the, that idea of stereotypes of men being active and women being passive, well, Van Zunen argues that's constructed through media language. OK, so often from a stereotypical perspective, we would see men, you know, being constructed through the mise en scène of their strong and powerful bodies and maybe also the performance codes of their assertive actions, the prioritic code of punching each other to kind of demonstrate um, uh, the, the, the powerful actions that men do. Um, a good way of thinking about this is men act women appear, that men, women have different functions in a media product. And Van Zunen takes Laura Mulvey's idea of the male gaze, and she argues that the function of women in media products is to be looked at, is to be gazed at by a heterosexual male audience. So even if a product is intended for women, for example, Woman Magazine would be a good example of this, then the target audience is always straight men. So for something like Woman Magazine, it would be an aspiration for women to live up to be sexualized. A character like Julie, on the other hand, is interesting because the mise-en-scene of her oversized jumper, you know, um, which is further anchored through the mise-en-scene of her scruffy hair and her lack of visible makeup, reinforces and combines to construct this atypical representation of women. Julie is not sexualized in Le Revenant, okay? And at first, anyway, at least in the episode that we have to study, she's not even particularly maternal. She's not even like a stereotypical mother, although already in the first episode we can see her starting to look after Victor. Julie is not scared, she's going out at night, she's surrounded by the mise-en-scene of the, um, of the grim, dark, bleak, concrete setting. And she just doesn't care. When she looks out of the window and we see that absolutely wonderful high-angle long shot of Victor standing in her communal garden, instead of going, ah, which would be a stereotypical representation of women that we often see in horror films, instead she goes, What's he doing there? Okay. Julie is not coded as being romantic. And although she is clearly, you know, in my opinion anyway, a hegemonically attractive woman, she is not coded as being sexually attractive in the same way that other characters are. For example, Lena in this show. So we could argue that Julie subverts Stuart Hall's representation theory. And we can definitely argue that Julie subverts Lisbeth Van Zunen's argument that men and women are constructed differently through media language, because Julie subverts this idea of the male gaze. She is not a character who is primarily constructed to be looked at by heterosexual men. Which brings us on to the third theory that you might be asked to analyse, which is a little bit more complicated. It's Bell Hooks's idea of feminism. And Bell Hooks takes this further. She argues that feminism is for everyone. What does this mean? It essentially means that the representation of women also affects the representation of men. It isn't just about men and women. Like there are many, many other factors that might come into this as well. For example, you may well be a woman, you may identify as a woman, but are you cisgendered? Are you black? 
Are you disabled? Are you working class? Okay, because the experience of a cisgendered, disabled black working class woman is going to be very, very different from the experience of a cisgendered, white, middle class, able bodied woman. And it will be completely different from the experience of a working class, white, transgendered woman and so on. OK, so everybody has their own experience and this affects different people in different ways. And we can argue that Julie is very, very much a complicated representation of a woman. Sorry, spoilers, but she is a survivor. She's a survivor of a brutal, violent and also sexually coded attack where she is stabbed uh, in her stomach. I don't know if we see that wound in the first episode, but it is there. Um, and although she has this anxiety and this fear as well, she essentially gets on with her life in the best way she possibly can. She lives by herself. She's not stereotypically coded like a stereotypical woman. Instead, she's surrounded by a nice stack of books and um, what else she watches. You know, she really likes horror films. She has a poster for The Exorcist up in her house. Um, she also is watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre when we both first see her. So all of these things basically point to a far, far more complex representation of women than simply men and women are different. Men are strong, women are weak, men are active, women are passive. Julie kind of mixes that all up and gives us a really strikingly different representation of women. Now, there are other women and other men and other things that we can talk about in terms of representation in Le Revenant. So for one thing, the character of Lena is also really interesting. She is a sex positive representation of a young woman. She is clearly motivated by sex. She clearly uh, is intending to pick up Simon at the bar and she's not punished by it. There's none of this very stereotypical her being attacked in a uh, darkened subway or anything because of that. She is living her life and she is a completely different representation than we might have seen in the 1960s. Likewise, Simon is a stereotypically hegemonically attractive man in this very smouldering kind of way. Uh, and yet, as we go on, he kind of sheds his kind of grumpiness and becomes a much more vulnerable character, especially when he basically breaks down with emotion while banging on Adele's door. Let me in, let me in, Adele shouting, go away, go away. Um, it's a very, very emotional scene that we might not normally expect to see a male coded character being involved in. And again, this constructs this very complicated, very different, even very challenging representation of gender in Le Revenant. Okay? So many different examples of, I mean, personally, if I was doing this exam and I'm not, I would argue that the representation of gender in Le Revenant is challenging. There are examples of it being very straightforward. For example, Claire, uh, Claire Surat, uh, Elena and Camille's mother, is arguably a very, very straightforward stereotypical representation of a middle class, middle aged French woman. Um, but ultimately, there are several representations of gender in Le Revenant which are rather challenging. And I think that this should be something that you structure your argument about in the exam.